today it is time for, well how about I just show you. So yes, today it is the first mow just eight days after the sand leveling and overseeding. I'm gonna explain kind of why I'm mowing right now, what I'm doing with this whole process so you understand everything that's going on with it. Today it's a nice, cloudy, cool day. We haven't had one of these in a very long time. So I'm gonna enjoy that as well. So first of all, why am I mowing already only eight days in? Well, you can see here from this front section that I just mowed how long the grass already is. The nice thing about ryegrass is that it's very quick to germinate, but also the other thing about ryegrass is that it grows really quickly as well. So if you want a target height for around three quarters of an inch, or today I'm mowing probably slightly lower than that with this manual reel, then you're gonna to have to get on this yard really quickly after you do your overseeding because it's going to grow really fast. I'm definitely probably up around at least an inch and a half to two inches in some areas here of growth already. So at that point, if you wanted like a height of cut of around three inches or something like that, then you could definitely let it get to four, maybe even more than that before your first mow and let it really grow in. But for me, because I need to mow it lower and I wanna train it at that height, I gotta start right away. So I'll show you a close up right here of an area that I I just went over with that manual reel and you'll be able to see all those new seedlings that are still there they're standing up straight they were cut cleanly it's a nice thing about that manual reel is that there's no suction to it so you're not doing anything with a rotary style you're also very lightly going over this area you're trying not to trample anything you're not taking any turns on the yard if possible it's nice because you get that clean cut of the reel mower and you cut all those little seedlings off just perfectly now like I said you don't want to be going around too crazy you don't want to be Connor style out here throwing a mower around or anything like that be careful. The other thing you might be wondering right now is how am I avoiding sand? Am I hitting any sand with the reel? And most likely, every once in a while I am. It's just kind of something that you have to deal with when you have sand down and you need to start mowing so quickly. So either have an old reel that you don't really care about or something that needs to be sharpened. This thing really definitely needs to be sharpened, so I'm not worried about it at this point. It's just kind of a temporary solution for me until I get back to my normal machine that I'm gonna reel mow with here. Probably, you know, it's not gonna be too long. So again, my general recommendation is just to try to be really light on your feet, just kind of hopping along here, not doing any major steps on anything if possible. It will kind of lay down temporarily in some spots, but from my experience, this will be totally fine. It'll be back up and growing really well, even in a day or so. I'm back to my every other day mowing program, at least with this. So this is a spot right here where you can see the grass just got laid down, but it didn't break anything off. This will be standing back up and just fine in a day, but like I said, just try not to do any turns. The nice thing about that mower is you can pick it up at the end of your turns. So also in some of these shots, you're probably gonna notice this wonderful wire that is laying here. So there was an internet issue down our street and I was informed yesterday that most likely this thing is going to get dug into my front yard here. And when that's gonna happen, I don't know. They're quite a bit behind in terms of uh, digging and things like that. Obviously I was not too thrilled with what I heard yesterday. Um, so we're just gonna have to see what happens and uh, if I'm still here at this place when everything needs to be fixed, then I'll show you how to fix it. And if I'm not, then I guess that's on to the next person. Not exactly something I was planning on for the fall to have this thing laying here for the entire season. So, um. Okay, submachine definitely works well, but it is a workout and I'm ready to get my powered machine back on this. It's not going to be long before I'm going to be able to do that. You can see back here, color is already looking fantastic. 
You can definitely tell the new ryegrass, I'll do a close up right here to show you kind of, it comes in more of a lime color and then it'll transition as it gets more mature. Uh, but really so far overall, I'm thrilled with that at day eight, absolutely. So a couple things to point out here for you really quickly is I have all these clippings on top of the yard, it's not ideal. I am gonna come through with a blower and clean those off just as much as I can without being too aggressive on everything else. And then the other thing is this peat moss. You're gonna see here just a really light dusting of peat moss in a couple spots. As soon as I got to about day four or five and I saw everything else germinating, I kind of look at my trouble areas, see where you can tell right here, the sprinkler doesn't hit that perfectly because this is wet and that is not wet. So just those areas where it was just straight sand and I knew I was gonna have continued problems with that unless I was out here hand watering every spot. Just put down just a slight bit more seed right in that spot and then put that top dressing on top to kind of hold things there, get a little extra moisture there and usually that will fix those spots right away. Let's go ahead and cover this too before I get yelled at in the comments like I did last season. So edging, yes I do edging on my yard but whenever I put in new seed there is some new stuff that's still growing in right along this edge. So I like to let that come in and get mature before I come in and do the edging. That's just me. If you want to come in and do your edging again right after you get your yard overseeded and you just start mowing, that's up to you. I don't think it's going to do any serious type of damage or anything like that. I just like to let everything along here mature first, then do the edging in probably about two weeks. So now it's time to look at the full renovation areas. These are always a little more challenging because obviously you're starting over completely. You don't have any other grass there to hold the seed in place or to, to kind of have it sit down in there and get slightly more moisture. So this is all, this was all put straight onto sand. I didn't top dress it with anything. It was just put straight onto sand. So at day eight, I can't say that I'm too disappointed in how it looks so far. Now, does it need to mature quite a bit? Yes. Am I gonna need to overseed probably a few of the spots that are really thin? Absolutely, but that kind of comes with it. I think that right now this is looking really pretty good for day eight and Some of this definitely is about Just as tall as the other stuff around two inches or so So I will probably do a quick very light mow on this look at my really thin spots and put some overseeding onto those And then we'll see how it looks in about another week or so So like I said, I know that looks thin, but it's going to start to mature here in the next couple weeks and I think you'll be surprised how much it's gonna fill in in that amount of time. Everything starts to tiller out and it will get a lot better. But I do need some more seed in here. Specifically a spot like that, definitely right in there, needs a little more seed. Anything with ryegrass right now that after the first couple mows or so that you see that's pretty thin and you see some bare spots, then know that it's not going to spread all that much. It will tiller out and get quite a bit thicker than you think it would but it does need more seed if you see some really bare spots. So here's the bluegrass area. I did not overseed this with anything. I just left it. And you can kind of see the sand is still working its way down in there. It usually takes a little longer on this bluegrass just because I don't have any overseed on it. So last thing to show you today is this section over here, which fescue takes a little longer to come in and to mature than perennial ryegrass from my experience on this backyard last year. There is germination here, but it's not growing in quite as fast and it's not maturing quite as fast yet. So I definitely think this is gonna also need some more overseed. It's on bare sand, no top dressing of any kind. I wanted to test that out to kind of see what results I would get. There's definitely some germination, but it's pretty thin at this point. The other thing to show you over here is a good example of how crazy the earthworms are in certain sections of my yard. So when I say I have more than an abundance of earthworms, you'll see it right over here. This was completely plain sand, as you'll see when I seeded this, and look at it now with how many mounds are over here. I came out here the other night, looked around, and they were just covered everywhere on the sand. So the theory was is that more sand is gonna kind of hinder them, and they're not gonna like that, but from this, what I'm seeing right now, I don't think that's the case. You can also definitely see here that anywhere that had a little bit of the dead grass still remaining or some sort of better cover for the seed to sit down in there, not be exposed as much, has way better growth and that's very typical. But on this plain sand, it's a lot harder to grow that in without anything on it. Many people ask now, when do you start to transition your water from 
three to four times a day, whatever you're doing to get the seed to germinate and transition that to more of your normal watering that you used to do. So usually when I start mowing is about when I start to transition my watering. I don't think it's an exact science, at least it never has been for me. And I don't think you need to worry about it too much either that it needs to be completely perfect or you need to do some major transition from a little more frequent water to less frequent but heavier doses. But as you start to get mowing, remember that those initial waterings are for the seed to germinate. So once it has germinated, once you're mowing, you can start to transition your water to less frequently and a little heavier doses. Well, it looks like the sun's about to come out, so that's my cue that this video is done for today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.